Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll explore how to name carboxylic acids systematically using IUPAC rules. To keep things clear and practical, we'll work through a series of examples together. You'll see how simple chains, branched structures, ring systems, and even aromatic acids are all named step by step. By the end of this video, you'll feel confident naming each of these carboxylic acids on your own. Let's start with the basics. Carboxylic acids contain the functional group, COOH. It's made up of a carbon double bonded to oxygen and bonded to a hydroxyl group. This group is always the highest priority in naming, which means it dictates the suffix of the compound. Whatever else is in the molecule, the COOH decides the ending of the name. Now that we understand the basics, let's apply the rules with our first example. To name it, we start by identifying the longest chain that includes the carboxyl carbon. This chain has four carbons, which corresponds to butane. Since it's a carboxylic acid, we replace the final E with oic acid, giving us butanoic acid. So that was a simple straight chain. Now, what happens when the chain has a branch? Let's take this example. The longest chain containing the carboxyl group has four carbons, so the parent is butane. On carbon 2, we see a methyl group. Replacing the E with oic acid and adding the substituent, the name becomes 2-methylbutanoic acid. So far, we've seen a straight chain and a single branch. Now, let's try a molecule with more than one substituent. Take this example. The molecule has a carboxyl group, which is carbon number one by default. Counting along the longest chain, we have five carbons in total so the parent name is pentane. Replacing the E with oic acid, it becomes pentanoic acid. Now, let's look at the branches. On carbon-3, we see a methyl group. On carbon-2, there's an ethyl group. When naming, we always put substituents in alphabetical order, so ethyl comes before methyl. Putting it all together, the correct name is 2-ethyl-3-methylpentanoic acid. So far, we've been working with condensed formulas and simpler acids. Now, let's level up with a skeletal formula that looks more complex at first sight. Here's the structure. As always, the carbon of the carboxyl group is carbon number one. From there, we look for the longest continuous chain that includes this carbon. Tracing carefully, we find seven carbons so the parent name is heptane. Changing the ending, it becomes heptanoic acid. Now, let's examine the branches. On carbon-2, there's a propyl group. On carbon-3, we see an ethyl group. On carbon-5, there's a methyl group. Next, we put them in alphabetical order. Ethyl, methyl, then propyl. Putting it all together, the correct name is 3-ethyl-5-methyl-2-propyl-heptanoic acid. Now let's look at another skeletal formula. Here's the structure. As always, the carbon of the carboxyl group is carbon number 1. From there, we trace the longest continuous chain that includes this carbon. Counting carefully, we find 6 carbons, so the parent name is hexane. Changing the ending, it becomes hexanoic acid. Now let's examine the branches. On carbon-3, there's a propyl group. On carbon-5, we see a chlorine atom attached, which gives us a chloro substituent. Next, we put them in alphabetical order. Chloro comes before propyl. Putting it all together, the correct name is 5-chloro-3-propylhexanoic acid. Now. Let's move from straight chains to a cyclic structure. With straight chains, the rule is simple. We take the alkane name and replace the ending E with oic acid. For example, pentane becomes pentanoic acid. 
but in cyclic compounds, the naming changes slightly. Here, the carboxyl group is attached directly to a six-membered ring. In this case, the entire ring is considered the parent. So the base name is cyclohexane. The carbon in the ring that carries the carboxyl group is automatically carbon-1. If there were other substituents, we would number around the ring to assign their positions. And here's the key difference. Instead of adding oic acid, as we do with straight chains, we add the suffix carboxylic acid. Putting it all together, the correct name for this molecule is cyclohexane carboxylic acid. Now, let's take the cyclic example a step further. This time, the cyclohexane ring carries not only the carboxyl group, but also two substituents, a methyl group and a bromine atom. As always, the carbon bearing the carboxyl group is automatically carbon-1. From there, we number around the ring in the direction that gives the lowest set of locants. This places the methyl group on carbon-2 and the bromine atom on carbon-5. The parent is cyclohexane, and because the carboxyl group is attached directly to the ring, we use the suffix carboxylic acid. Now we put everything together. Substituents are listed in alphabetical order, so bromo comes before methyl. The correct name for this molecule is 5-bromo-2-methyl-cyclohexane carboxylic acid. Finally, let's look at an aromatic example. Here, instead of a straight chain or a simple ring, the carboxyl group is directly attached to a benzene ring. When this happens, the parent name is no longer based on benzene with a suffix. Instead, this compound has its own special name, benzoic acid. The carbon of the ring that carries the carboxyl group is treated as carbon-1. If the ring has substituents, we number around it to give them the lowest possible positions and then list them in alphabetical order, just as we've done before. But in this simple case, there are no other substituents. So the correct name here is simply benzoic acid. For more practice and a stronger foundation, you can always check out our previous videos on IUPAC nomenclature. They'll give you a solid base to connect with what we learned today. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll be happy to help.